with just a few short weeks left before the A-level exams start, here at Taylor Tutors, we thought it was about time we talked to you about exam strategies. Now, year 13, you've not had the opportunity to sit exams before in an exam hall with hundreds of other students and all the other stresses that come with it. So in this video, we're gonna address a few things that you really need to think about other than revision before you sit your exams. So let's start by thinking about some of the things that are no longer in your control as you walk into that exam. How hard you've worked, how much you understand the content, how much exam practice you have done. There is no point worrying about those things when you go into that exam hall. What's done is done. You can no longer control that. What you really need to do is just focus on the exam ahead. Really no point thinking about things that are no longer in your control. Now, speaking of things that are not in your control, grade boundaries. There is really no point worrying about gray boundaries because they are not in your control. What is in your control is how well you perform in that exam. Gray boundaries are set by the exam boards after all the papers have been marked and they get a distribution curve of marks from the students who sat that exam. Your aim is to be in the upper echelons of that distribution curve. You wanna be in the top 10, top 20% of students, and that's what's gonna get you the grade. So do not worry about grade boundaries. They're out of your control. So just focus on your game and what you're gonna do in that exam. But despite these things being fixed, your grades can change wildly depending on other factors which you can control just before and during the exam. And these are really important things to think about. So number one is exam practice. Now, hopefully you've been doing full papers as part of your revision anyway, and here at TT, we promote the TT method that involves doing full papers in timed exam conditions and analyzing them afterwards. But I want you to go one step further before your real exams, and that's take yourself to an unfamiliar setting to do a full paper in timed exam conditions. This will alleviate any stresses or anxieties you might have walking into that exam room for the first time and sitting an exam in unfamiliar surroundings. So go to a neighbor's house, go to an aunt or uncle's house or your grandma's house or the local library. Go somewhere less familiar than your house or your bedroom and that will help negate some of those anxieties and stresses you have of being in unfamiliar surroundings. Now number two, is something that we like to call story time. Now, when you sit in the exam and they say start, you've got two options. You can open the paper, glance through all of the questions, see what sorts of topics and what types of questions are ahead of you. Or you can leave it all a mystery and just start with question one and deal with one question at a time. Now, you need to figure out which type of student you are. Looking through the paper and seeing what topics and types of questions are coming up can be very beneficial. You never know what your old gray matter can be working on in the background after you've seen a question and you know what's coming up. That gives a bit of uh, comfort to some students knowing what's in the exam before they start. However, in some students that can cause real anxiety. If you know question eight is on a topic that you absolutely hate and you don't feel that confident with, it's gonna put you off for the rest of the exam. So what you need to do is figure out which student you are before you walk into that exam room. Don't leave it until you get to the real thing to figure out what works for you. Do that when you're practicing your papers before your exam starts. Now, number three, the third thing you need to think about is your question strategy. Now, there's no rule book to say you have to do question one, then question two, then question three. You have autonomy in that respect. Now, some students like to do that deal with these questions one at a time in the order they come in in the paper. Some students like to look through the paper as we discussed in point number two, and then do the topics and do the questions that they feel more comfortable with first. Another strategy might be that if you come across a question that you think is particularly difficult, and it's gonna take an inflated amount of time to get that number of marks. So for example, if it's five marks, and you think it's gonna take you a lot longer than five minutes to do, then you can skip that and work through the questions that come more easily to you. By doing that, you know exactly how much time you've got to spend on those more difficult questions. There's nothing more frustrating than spending too much time on difficult questions and then not finishing the exam, and then you look at the end and it's an easy question that you could have got easy marks on. So again, 
you need to think about which strategy works for you long before you walk into that exam room for the first time. Now, the fourth and final thing that we really want to think about and practice before you start your real exams is checking for errors or what we call FFSs. Now, that stands for frustrating fail or slip, or indeed, it might be the noise when you realized you made a really silly error and you lost an easy mark. So you must practice at the end of your exam looking for those FFSs, looking for those simple mistakes that you may have made that are going to drop you marks and potentially cost you a grade. Now, typical things to look out for are making sure you've used all the key terms or phrases, those buzzwords you see in the mark schemes for your written answers. Making sure you have actually answered the question. When you go back and look at your answer to a question and then read the question again, you're like, hmm, I've not quite answered that. So it's always worth checking those. Check that you've put the right units on or that you've included the units in your calculation answer. And of course, numbers of significant figures as well. All of these are really simple things you need to practice checking for at the end of your exam. So please do leave five to 10 minutes, if possible, at the end of your exam to make sure that you check for those FFSs. You'd be surprised how many marks you can gain just by getting good at spotting your mistakes. Now we come to the real sharp end. It's the night before the exam and what should you be doing? Well, what you shouldn't be doing is cramming as much information in your head as possible and staying up till two o'clock in the morning doing so. You've got to recognize that what you're doing at this point is panicking and trying to fit as much information in your head just in case that sort of thing comes up in the exam tomorrow. You've done all the hard work. What you really should be doing now, if anything, is just limbering up for the exam a little bit. Focus on the retrieval of information. Focus on using the skills that you've learned over the last two years. Revision is done. So just limber up before the exam, maybe just by doing a few past paper questions to make yourself a little feel a little bit better and remind yourself of how much you do actually know. Now, speaking of reminding yourself, why not look over some of the past papers that you've done where you've achieved your target grade. Give yourself a pat on the back. You know you can do this. You've done all the hard work. You've proven you can get those grades in those practice papers, and that will make you feel much better the night before the exam. Now, the last thing I'll say here, and it's probably the most obvious, but do get a good night's sleep. Don't panic. You've done all the hard work. You've done everything you can do by now. So get a good night's sleep, get up, go through your regular morning routine, and you'll be ready for that morning exam. So now we come to the day of the exam. Now you could be stood outside the exam hall or sat in the exam hall just waiting for the exam to start and anxiety creeps up on you. Now having anxiety can have a real impact on your performance in that exam. So it's so important that you know the signs of anxiety and you know how to deal with it. So if you find yourself having a really dry mouth, maybe your limbs are shaking, Maybe you've got these catastrophizing thoughts like, oh my God, this is gonna go so badly, I don't know anything at all. That's anxiety playing tricks on you, making you think that you're not good enough to do well in this exam. Simple breathing techniques can really, really help reduce your anxiety and dispel those thoughts of catastrophe. So it's really important that you know how to spot them and you know how to deal with it inside the exam. Always remind yourself, you've worked really hard over the last two years, You've got this. There are certain things out of your control and you need to accept those. Just focus on you and that piece of paper in front of you and all that hard work that you've done over the last two years. Now, the last thing to think about before you go in is mindset. This is really, really important and it sounds a little bit cheesy, but hear me out. So when you go to an exam, you're thinking, right, this is an exam, an examiner's written this, I am being examined. What you wanna do is try and put that to one side you are not being examined, you are not being tested. What you are doing is walking into that exam room to show to the examiner and the exam board exactly how much you know, how hard you've worked over the last two years. This is your opportunity to show off. So if you go in with the right mindset, like I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna show them what I can do, rather than like, oh, what if I fail? It's a really important mindset to have, that positive mindset walking into the exam, and that's gonna stand you in good stead moving forward, and it can help with your anxieties as well. So, 
In conclusion, all of the things that we talked about in this video can have a huge impact on your performance in the exams this summer. So they're really, really worthwhile thinking about. It can be the difference between one grade and another. And just think about how much extra revision you'd need to do in order to bump up your grade by one whole grade. So taking these things into account, thinking about your strategies, thinking about spotting anxieties and going in with the right mindset, are all really important factors that you need to consider. And hopefully you found this video really, really useful.